about all your monitors and I thought it would be beneficial to just talk about because it's like a hundred of them. I don't even know where to start. So I'll start. This you, is the they call it the DBM. That's what controls all of the precision stuff for the Gen 3. Uh, when you go to a Gen 3, it, it runs off this box. So uh, but that's what this is. This what this is what controls the planter. Everything with the planter, this this monitor controls it all. <clears throat> um, up here, we'll go back to that. Okay. Up here, I've got my camera. I've got it mounted on one of my meters so I can see see that little knob spinning. Yep. So that I can tell when my meter stops spinning and starts spinning just for my own comfort. And then when I'm traveling down the road, I've got one out the back so I can see if a car's trying to pass me when I'm trying to turn into a field or you know a lot of times I can't see behind I can't see behind me, so this is really nice to have when traveling. Uh, this box down here is for folding um, planner and markers if you need them. Um, okay, this iPad is pretty much a continuation of the Gen 3. They're hooked together, so it gives you a more detailed map of like, you know, you're say this is this is downforce map. Um, yeah, and I can whatever metrics I want, population, applied downforce, insecticide, planner speed, all that. Um, Why? I, I like I like the downforce. Why? The most. Um, it, it tells you ground conditions, um, I don't know, I like to see them. So uh, we'll take this over here, this specific spot, I turned around before I planted it. So when I planted over it, you can see all those, uh, the blue is loss of ground contact. So that's what you're trying to stay away from, the, the ride of the row units. So there's a, a load pin on every row unit and that's what that's what's giving you this information. So a lot of the row units, when I bounced over my my tracks that were in the field, they lost ground contact. Okay. And then I have this set up, you know, acre counter, population, um, vacuum, hybrid, all that stuff. Okay. Um, this is for the clean sweep, which is the row cleaners in the front. So I can, it's, it's all air. So there's a compressor on the back of the planter, and this is, this middle one is the compressor, how much tank pressure I have. This is how much lift pressure I have. And then this one is how much down pressure I'm putting down. So I've been mostly in the lift, you know, in conventional tilled ground. I don't need to push down too much if you're in a no-till or a situation where you needed to really push those row cleaners down. Um, you can do that as well. Talking about the row cleaners are those silver. So, so it moves trash out of the way before the actual row unit goes through. And before before you had this thing, which you said this is like your favorite addition this year. Yeah, we put this on both uh, both of our main planters this year, and I, I don't think I would go without it anymore. Because otherwise, he would have to go outside to each one of those little silver things and manually adjust it, where now he can just do it, all of them, by lifting that bar. So it helps do a better job without, I mean, he would just probably not do it because it would take too long, right? Ground conditions change so often, you know, even in the field, even in this field, we'll have different softer areas, harder areas, but, you know, when you're changing from conventional till to no-till to strip till to vertical till, that all takes time. It was about 15 to 20 minutes every time. You know, you want to go out there if you have a screw adjust. Um, if you have to pull pins out and all that sort of stuff, it all takes time, which holds the planter up. So this this is well worth the money, I think. Okay, we got a few more monitors here. So this one, um, I think on the newer tractors, it's all integrated into the uh, into this armrest. But on this tractor, it's a 2011. This Ag Leader Integra is what steers the tractor, and that's all I have it here for. So that that's my that's my guidance. And then this is just tractor information, hydraulics, uh, flow. If there's anything wrong with the tractor, it would be in here. 
All right, the brains of the operation. Yep, so the brains of the operation, we have, so on this planter, we have um, V-Drive, Delta Force, Speed 2, Smart Firmers, uh, V-Apply HD, which is my liquid. I'm probably forgetting something else, but that, that's, that's what all these metrics are. So I've got my vacuum pressure, field acres, and you can adjust all this stuff, whatever you want. You can add, they call them widgets. So you can go in here and you can add or subtract. You know, these are all my metrics. Um, controls. I could make it a big map if I wanted to. You know, any, anything you want. And that's what's really nice about the, the Gen 3. I didn't like it right away, but there's just so much more customization that you can do. So I have this set up kind of how I want it. I'm sure there's a thousand different ways and whatever else. So we've got, you know, starter, my insecticides down here, my, you know, um, smart, or, uh, yeah, smart, smart firmer stuff is all up here. My the, vacuum pressures. The flare moisture is one that you've been watching, right? Yeah, so this year we, we've had, not, I wouldn't say trouble, but it's been a lot drier than in years past. And, you know, you look at studies on yield correlated with furrow moisture when you're planting, and they're, they're directly correlated when you, when you get down, I think it's in the 27 range and below, you know, your seed doesn't have the moisture it needs to germinate as quickly as it should. So, like right now, we went through a spot you know, I'm down into the high 20s there, it turned yellow. So that's been really interesting. Those smart firmers are really cool. Uh, so we only have three of those on the planter. We have them every eight rows, but it'll give us a map, you know, our CECs, our soil temp, so we can say, you know, our soil temp was this when we planted and our seeds were up in X amount of days. Yeah. As opposed to if we planted when it was too cold. When we started planting, I'm not embarrassed to say, but we started planting when it was too cold. This was down in the 30s, almost to the freezing point. We've you know, only we're... been planting for like less than two weeks. Yeah, yep. And it, it's interesting to see uh, all, all the all the soil conditions change with with those. You know, you can see your. Uh, furrow moisture change up on top of the hill, you can see your CECs change, you can see your, you know, soil temperature change, um, organic matter, all that stuff, it's, it's reading all that, and it'll be interesting to map that, and see, see the correlates. Cool. Love it. Well, I'm really glad that I chose this field for you to explain all these, what? How long is it? A mile and a quarter. A mile and a quarter. And he barely got through talking about all the monitors. <laughs> a mile and a quarter. Because there's so many. But now it's my turn. So I'm going to tell you about the rest of the things. So up there, you got the radio. And it plays songs. But he never listens to music because... <laughs> Just kidding. Because he's listening to all of the sounds of the track right now. And his deep Josh thoughts. <laughs> and then we got the windshield wipers and the uh, hazard lights and uh, oh, the CB. That's another thing. I want one of those for my car so I can talk to him. He'll probably get annoyed though. And uh, yeah, right over there, over here, uh, that, that's the temperature controls. So there you have it. I can do this. Scooch over. <laughs>